Oscillators, such as sawtooth and square waves, are rich in harmonics, which can be seen when the waveform is spectrum analyzed. In theory, a waveform such as the sawtooth wave is actually made of multiple sine waves of different frequencies at different amplitudes, all mixed together. Sawtooth waves contain both even and odd harmonics. A square wave is also made of multiple sine waves, but only odd harmonics. When we apply a frequency cutoff filter to the audio, we are essentially eliminating these harmonics at the higher end for a low pass filter, or the lower end for a high pass filter. The simplest explanation for how a digital filter works is that it is based upon making copies of the incoming sample to be filtered. The copies are phase shifted, then added against the next incoming sample. In the case of a low pass filter, lower frequencies will be zero degree phase shifted, which means no phase shifting will occur. Mathematically, the lower frequencies will be added together, which will double their amplitude, but the amplitude is halved before a final output value is rendered to counter this effect. But when we approach and pass the cutoff point, the higher frequency harmonics will become phase shifted. There will be a roll-off area where the amplitude of higher frequencies will decrease with the increased phase shifting until they will be fully shifted 180 degrees, which will cause the samples to cancel each other out, thus no audio at those frequencies. To apply a high pass filter, we simply invert the phase shifting process so lower frequencies are canceled out, leaving only the high frequency harmonics audible. And to achieve resonance, we use a feedback process to boost the amplitude of the harmonics at the cutoff point. There is a free 500 page book available online by Vadim Zavalishin called The Art of VA Filter Design that covers the theoretical and practical aspects of virtual analog filter design. The virtual analog filter we will be using is based upon the equations discussed within its pages. While we won't be going into detail the complexity of the math equations the code will run, we can discuss how to use the functions to achieve our desired goals, which is to either open and close the filter manually or by using envelope generators, LFOs, or other modulation sources to control the filter automatically. Now let's take a look in BP Filter 1 DSP Filter.h header file and scroll down to the first set of macros. We have filter gain, max frequency, minimum frequency. These macros are best left as they are, but some experimentation could be done by gradually increasing or decreasing the values if you find a need to retune the filter. Next we have type def struct DSP filter. We will use this type def struct to create the VCF struct that will keep track of some parameters like filter type, filter frequency, filter gain, and resonance feedback. This struct is also where we will store copies of the samples we will be altering with phase shifting. Since it is a type death struct, we could reuse this for as many filters as we'd like. We could have more than one filter used in series or parallel, or if we try to change from monophonic to polyphonic, we could have one filter for each note played. Due to the limitations of the STM32F411 microcontroller we are using, we will be limited to just one filter. If we remove some of the extras like the effects and MinBlep oscillators, 
then it could be possible to go polyphonic with more than one filter. Otherwise, we would need to use a more powerful microcontroller to go polyphonic. The last portion of our DSP filter header file is the exported functions in the bottom. They are there to give other files access to functions in the dspfilter.c file. Now let's go take a look in the dspfilter.c file. At the top we have two definitions, DSP filter VCF and float filter frequency. DSP filter VCF is the struct we will be saving important values in that we will be using in the filter code. Filter frequency will be used to manually set the filter cutoff frequency using a MIDI control change knob. Init filter is a function called from the synth init function found in wavegen.c. This will initialize the VCF struct members with initial values for the filter code to use. Next we have filter frequency set and filter resonance set. These functions are used to manually control and limit the filter cutoff and resonance amplitude using MIDI control changes. Filter type set selects the type of filter we will be applying to the samples or simply turning it off altogether. Selections are made using MIDI control changes. The set filter value function will be where envelope generators and other modulations will be applied for a final filter cutoff frequency value. It will be called once for each time make sound is ran in wavegen.c. Calc filter sample is where all the complex math is done. Calc filter sample is ran 500 times in the make sound for loop. Each sample generated must be ran through this function when the filter is on. The set filter value function can remain outside the for loop because changes in the cutoff frequency will happen much slower. Running it inside the for loop would waste critical microcontroller processing power. At the bottom we have process clip which contains a math equation we will use several times in the filter above. The key functions we need to be concerned with are filter frequency set, filter resonance set, filter type set, and set filter value. The filter frequency, resonance, and type set functions are adjusted by using MIDI control changes. They are called from MIDI CC's.c inside the process receive MIDI control changes function right here. Filter frequency set uses the MIDI control change value passed on to the argument value in this equation. Filter frequency set uses the MIDI control change value passed on to the argument val in this equation. Filter frequency equals minimum frequency times max frequency divided by minimum frequency to the power of value divided by MIDI max. The outcome of this equation is then divided by sample rate. The result will be assigned to the global variable filter frequency and will be used in the set filter value function which we will go over in a moment. Filter resonance set uses the MIDI control change value passed on to the argument val in this equation. Here we have a local variable, feedback, which will be assigned a float value between 0 to 1. VCFQ in our VCF struct is assigned a value that is 1 minus feedback. Before we exit the function, we make sure VCFQ has a value of at least 0 0.01. Filter type set uses the MIDI control change value passed on to the argument val and vcf.type will be assigned a value of 0, 1, or 2. We will check the value of vcf.type when the calc filter sample function is ran to determine if the filter effect is on 
and which type of filter is selected. The last filter function we need to give close attention to is the set filter value function. This is the function where all of our envelope generator and other modulations will occur. The Filter 1 project does not have any envelope generators, LFOs, or other modulation sources applied to it to simplify explanation. But as we add more features, we will be adding more equations when we run this function. For now, let's take a look in wavegen.c make sound, and right above the for loop, you will see set filter value, filter frequency times 22. This is as basic as it gets for this function. Filter frequency is multiplied by 22 to offset for modulation values that will be added in later on in the more advanced lessons. The next lesson will change this function to look like this. And a much more advanced project later on will change it to look like this. We can add as many modulations as we need inside this one function call. They are all used to reduce the cutoff frequency. When they are not used, their values will be 1 so they have no effect at all. There really isn't any interaction done with the calc filter sample function except for choosing the type of filter which is seen near the end of the code right here. Calc filter sample is called for each sample created within the for loop section of the make sound function and is found here. Notice that prior to its call, there is a if statement that checks if VCF type has a true value, which in this case would be either a 1 or 2 value. If the value is false, we will skip the next line of code and calc filter sample function will not be called. But if the value in vcf.type is true, we will not skip the next line and we will call calc filter sample using the sample value we have stored in y. The calc filter sample function will return a process sample value and will become the new value stored back into y. That's all there really is to the filter in this very basic project. Right now we have basic controls for filter frequency, filter resonance, and type selection. In the next lesson, we will add in a separate envelope generator to automate opening and closing the filter when we play a note. We will also add in a simple LFO modulation as well.